subscribe here. So no, I think I'll put uh, Windows Server 2019 data center edition on one of the servers. So let's have a look. So I'll put the link to the download site or to the download location in the comments. Uh, basically you just cut land on this page and then you it's got lots of things to choose from but you can take the 2019 Windows Server 2019 section here and then you say okay I want to have the ISO continue and then you just fill in some uh, very generic information no big deal and then you say continue and then you get the ISO download uh, so what I did is uh, it, yeah, and this contains um, all the uh, the editions of um, the data center edition so it's the yeah so that, uh, ah, we'll see in the uh, installation overview um, I'll, I'll be showing that uh, this is a 180 day free trial so you can run it for 180 days without a license um, I burnt it to a, a blu-ray disc <laughs> because I didn't have any uh, that was the only burner drive I had around anymore I don't know, I haven't, haven't been burning discs for a, a long time. Uh, but it's a USB uh, based, so you just plug it into a USB port. And um, I just connected it to a random port on the server and started the server and it booted immediately. So I uh, no issues there. I'll be show that also in the video coming up soon. So, um, let's get into it. So anyway, that was quite painless. Got it started at least. Let's see if the installation will be will be awesome. So that's English time currents for See when it asks for edition one. Huh? As far as I read the description of the ISO, this should have all versions of, or the potential to install whatever version of Windows Server 2019 you want. And you get 180 days of. Ah, oh, here we go. Exactly. I want the data center evaluation with desktop experience. 64-bit architecture, yes please. Yeah, you get 180 days of evaluation license. disk <laughs> this is the where it gets like you get really scared like when you press that specific max like if this comes up blank then ah uh, it's like oh no then 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 you know you yeah you know. well that's nice so it it, uh, it um finds the raid controller it finds the logical drive to find on it so that's nice okay of course we have to now um uh, see if it will actually work <laughs> using the wrong mouse. <laughs> this is too many, too many mi mouses. Right so now use the correct. One. Yes, this is the one connected to the server. 
So, okay, alright. Next. Okay, let's see what happens now then. I mean, the thing is that you, HP provides the, um, the dialogue functionality. If you have the license, you can actually do, um, you can remote access the, the server, like, screen-wise. And then you can also have the option to set up virtual media, and you have the option of downloading operating systems directly into the server, or making uh, predefined installation packages. But I mean, all that infrastructure is, I don't, I mean, as an, but it, it's nice to see that you can also um, do it on a low level, like on a per server basis. So if, if, you, if you want to be in, yeah, if you don't have that infrastructure licensing, or if you're in a repair scenario, scenario or something that you can actually install stuff directly on the server. So it actually behaves itself, so it doesn't block you from it. I have heard of old server equipment where you, you actually, if I understood, you need to license from, you need to license a specific license from the vendor even to be able to install an operating system. <laughs> I think it's a bit crazy. But this looks, this is looking promising. Well, getting ready to copy files. Uh, or getting files ready for installation. I didn't actually ask my house to put my shenanigans space and drive on the floor before I am assuming that the distance to that's like that. And now it's going to run more happy. And licensing is available to the strikes. I feel that I've got some links and comments. I hope I remember that.
Wow, look at that. Aha, uh -huh, no network. You see, this is the server that hasn't got the um, network interfaces um, installed. So I'm still waiting for those to arrive. So I was t thinking of taking a chance and see if it would use the ILO. So I'll take a break here and I'll fix the temporary network for it. I mean, the rest of this is probably just um, pretty much standard Windows using, so... Hmm. I think what I'll do is I will come back and comment on anything that's of super interest. Otherwise, I don't think this... Uh, this video is more about installing the operating system, not configuring it, so... So we'll see. If I find anything, I'll add it. So anyway, I did find a few few um, interesting facts. As was stated, I didn't have the um, physical um, media adapters for the server in question, so I, had, I decided I would add Wi-Fi, and I just took a standard Wi-Fi dongle and stuck it into the USB port, and it um, complained about it um, didn't work and then I looked in the device manager and I could see that it was and then I tried to update the drivers and it gave some very very strange error when I said um, update the drivers and then I tried another dongle and it did the same thing so um, then I started searching on the internet and I found out that um, on um, Windows uh, Server 2019 um, Wi-Fi is a feature <laughs> We actually have to enable the um, enable the feature. So I just um, I'll put the the command as a comment in the, and so you can do it yourself. But the easiest way to activate it, or well, the shortest way, is to bring up um, Windows PowerShell and then just enter that command and, and then reboot the machine, and then you have um, then it will automatically um, in, install the drivers for the Wi-Fi, and everything will work just fine. But that that was a bit of a trip up. Um, as you see now, I have all all green here in the um, dashboard, and this is not the case when you start up the system for the first time. It's a lot of red, especially in on the local server, all servers, and it's basically related to services. So just ignore that. Um, make sure you apply all Windows updates. So so do that first, um, because then you. Um, yeah, and then um, for those that want to use um, remote desktop, don't try and configure or use remote desktop before Windows updates is installed, because I had bad experience with that. And uh, Windows update, uh, the remote um, desktop needs to actually be enabled, so you have to do it. You go into local server and then you just say here, enable, so then you get the actual remote desktop working. But as I said, don't try before you put the Windows updates. I, I had. It, it, it didn't want to work for me at least. Um, yeah, and then there's a service that um, basically comes up red. Uh, it's called Download Maps Manager, and it's a service that is started by other services if it's needed, but the, it is um, uh, configured to be um, it's configured to be um, started on startup with a delay, and and that's why it's red. So you know this mechanism is a bit dumb. So it, it probably does start at startup after a delay, but then another service says, "Hey, you're not needed. I'm killing you," or it's shutting you down, and then it's shut down, and then you get it in the as a dumb um, red notification in the status. So you you just come into here and you you uncheck the um, service on the, so that it's no, no longer monitored anymore and so, so then you get a nice green um, panel here uh, let's see 
Yeah, and then another thing, you know, after 180 days, you need to have a license for the um, actual server, uh, Windows Server 2019 Data Center Edition. So I put a link where you can get a license for that uh, relatively cost efficiently. Uh, you also need to have user or device car licenses and or remote desktop licenses, depending on your use case. And, and those I recommend you search through the usual seller sites and you'll probably find a good deal uh, for a package. Usually they come as packs of 50 or, or something. They're not out, outlandishly expensive. Um, and then um, I thought we could, um, as a bonus, we could actually go put the um, media adapters in place and see if the Ethernet connection stops working. So let's get into it. Theoretically, this one here, which is an F uh, SFP adapter or media adapter, well, that's quite heavy actually. Uh, so, you can get different media adapters. So, depending on if you want to run, um, you know, like in this case, this is a 1 gig adapter or a 10 gig or a fiber or a multi mode or whatever, you get the actual um, SFP plus modules. Card stays the same, or the card stays the same, and then you slot in these modules. And there's lots of different variants of this technology. So let's see what happens when I slot this. this in, and hopefully it's. Now I'm not sure if it installs the drivers and stuff automatically, or if the system will work up. So. I'm not sure what That's already on now, of course. So. manager they are these two so it's actually uh, the oh, the card that accepts the media adapters is, is capable of 10 gigabit ethernet traffic so you, I could actually slot in a media adapter for 10 gigabit and then if I have um, copper uh, yeah and then if I had another unit then I can plug in another one of those uh, SPD uh, modules SPF modules and um, then I could have 10 gigabit Ethernet, but now I'm running 1 gigabit Ethernet, so that's good enough for me right now. And then if one looks at the um, networking settings, then we have uh, Ethernet 1, 
and then Ethernet 2, and then I've taken away the... Ah, oh, it's still showing the Wi-Fi, why? I took the Wi-Fi out. Ah, <laughs> oh, this probably hasn't. Let's see. It's, um... Not sure available networks. No, oh, sorry. Yeah, actually, here's the actually more clear view, so you actually have the um, two um, Ethernet connections. And then let's see if this is up to date now after a little delay. Yeah, now I took away the uh, no, no the Wi-Fi. Okay, but now it says the Wi-Fi is disconnected, so it wasn't updating the, the status information. But so that's cool, so now I actually have gigabit ethernet on two ports. And um, yeah, the other server had four, um, well, uh, four um, gigabit um, ethernet ports already on the motherboard. So, And you can actually, you can connect the, all the ports to the, your network. They'll pick up independent IP addresses and if there's traffic, con if there's connections being uh, routed to the server, then um, you can actually um, connect to using the different IP addresses, and then you can uh, do load load balancing tricks and stuff, even even on your own local users. So I hope you found that informative. Um, please consider subscribing, hit the like button if you like the video. Uh, merch is available, and if if you'd like to, you could also buy me a cup of coffee. Um, the links are in the description. And um, I'll see you in the next one.